Hey Fight Squad, what's up? Welcome to today's Fightcast, where we're not gonna discuss any kind of combat news, but I'm gonna explain why I think that Fedor Emelianenko is the greatest of all time in MMA. Fedor returns to the sport this Saturday, and he's fighting Matt Mitrion in Bellator. Actually, before we get to the main part, Bellator released a very nice and very funny promo video that has to do with Fedor's glorious sweater of absolute victory. So, why did the glorious sweater come to fruition? Nobody knows. When For those who don't know, Fedor's uh, legendary sweater first appeared in a press conference before his fight with Andrea Arlovski in Affliction in 2009. He was studying between Oscar de la Hoya and Tito Ortiz, and they both were, you know, really nicely suited up. And he stole the scene with his extreme casualness. Then he knocked Arlovski off his socks, and a legend was born. He wore it again before the Brad Rogers fight in Strike Force, and knocked him out too. Then the sweater was retired somewhere, I hope in a nice island by the sea, not in Siberia. And Fedor even said uh, to Ariel Helvani in an interview that he didn't know where it was. And then Fedor started losing. And Fedor was never the same. And then suddenly, just before his fight with Mitrion, there we have Fedor again wearing his glorious sweater of absolute victory. And so the legend lives on. Especially if he manages to knock Mitrione out too. I have the links for that ingenious promo video from Bellator down below. Check it out. Now, in another video by Bellator, we see Fedor Emelianenko going in to sign uh, the contract to fight Mitrione and former UFC welterweight champion GSP is there and we see him actually kneeling in respect to Fedor and I know GSP is a very down-to-earth guy he's always really respectful but he wouldn't do that to anyone else and that's why I'm here and I want to try to explain to you guys why I think Fedor is the greatest of all time in MMA first of all let me make a distinction I think that titles like greatest and best are not the same. Best is used for a comparison in skill and only in the present time. The best is someone who can beat everyone else today and only today. Great is a comparison in achievement and in legacy and it covers the whole history of the sport. It's a different comparison than skill because MMA being a very young sport, every generation is definitely better and more skillful than the previous one. So it's not a fair comparison to make, but we can compare achievements. For example, I'd say that Daniel Cormier is a better fighter than Chuck Liddell was, but Chuck Liddell was a greater champion than Cormier is, at least for now. Also, Stipe Miocic is a better fighter than let's say uh, Nogueira was. But Nogueira's legacy is far better than what Stipe's is, at least at this point. So I'm not saying that Fedor skill-wise is the best fighter this sport has ever seen, I'm just saying that he has the best legacy. And I don't think you need to be a fan of his to understand it. Every fighter has a peak, which usually comes when he wins the world title at the best organization. A title in Bellator is not the top peak. A title in UFC is a top peak. Then, as he defends that title, the peak grows longer. And since defending a title is actually harder than winning it, the more you defend, the longer you stay at the peak, the greater your legacy. I know some people slight Fedor because he never fought in the UFC, but you have to know that Pride back then had the best heavyweight division in the world, better than UFC's. And a couple of good fighters that UFC had, like Randy Couture, Tim Sylvia and Andrea Lovsky, two of them actually lost to Fedor in a very spectacular way, and Fedor beat them when they were still at the top. Arlovski was number two in the world when he lost to Fedor. Fedor was number one. Team Sylvia was at the top ten, I think maybe the top five, and the way he beat Team Sylvia, no one had done it before. So Fedor was defeating the best heavyweights in the world, and he did it for eight years in a row. That's his peak. I'm counting from his win against Heath Herring in 2002, when Fedor was actually the outsider, until his loss to Fabricio Verdum in Strikeforce in 2010. So Fedor's peak is 8 years and 22 fights. Anderson Silva's peak started when he beat Chris Lieben in 2006 until his loss uh, to Chris Weidman in 2013. That's 7 years and 16 wins. That's obviously great, but it's still less than Fedor. And I know Fedor had some fights that were not top quality competition, but you can say the same of some of Anderson's opponents. Irving, Cote, Luther and so on. Besides, the more you fight, the bigger the risk you get from getting caught in something. Either it's a strike, either it's a submission, exactly like uh, GSP did with Matt Serra. Since we're talking about GSP, his peak was 6 years and 12 fights. You can add a year, maybe a couple of fights from before he lost to Serra, but still it's not enough to beat Fedor. Now, John Jones was great and he was going up there and he was ready to break all records and he did great but we all know how he shot himself in the leg. Someone might say that Jones is better 
because he only fought top contenders. Yes, Jones only fought top contenders, but it's not like Fedor didn't fight all the top contenders of his time. He fought and beat them. Then he fought a couple of you know freak fights, let's be honest. But even if you can add extra value from a freak fight, you can say that he never got caught in something that knocked him out and put him in submission. Example, when he survived Randleman's slam of death. But then you can, you know, add withdrawal points for different stuff. You can give extra points to Fedor for being a smaller heavyweight. You can take points from the freak fights if you want. Then you can give more points to TSP for finishing at the top. But you can take points because his peak was broken by the Matt Serra loss. You can give extra points to Anderson Silva for fighting in a bigger weight class, but then he didn't finish at the top. There were other issues, as we all know. Someone will have points for one fighter, someone will have points for another fighter. I don't think you can actually distinguish between them this way. The big differentiator is the length of their peak. Fedor's peak was the biggest, no pun intended. There are of course other greats out there. Maybe some of you guys uh, have a different opinion than me. Maybe you think someone else is the GOAT. I'll be happy to hear your opinions. Leave them down in the comments below. Tell me who you think is the best. Tell me why you think he's the best or why you think I'm wrong. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, maybe a subscription to our channel, and don't forget, always be some kind of fighter.